All right, guys, so over the last couple of weeks with Ledger flopping with Ledger Recover, which would send your private keys off to complete randos, and Trezor, the Model T, apparently being hacked by security firm Unciphered, I really was anxious about keeping my crypto in my Ledger. The question that really burned in my mind was, all right, which hardware wallet can I trust now? Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find, right? So. Shortly after making my Ledger Recover video, which you can find right there, Keystone actually reached out. They were the only hardware wallet manufacturer that reached out and they offered to send me one of their wallets to test and they wanted me to do a review for them. I asked them if they wanted anything specific in that review and they just said that they wanted an honest review. And I thought that, God, this was a really timely moment. So here it is, here is a pure honest review, my personal opinion on what I thought of the Keystone hardware wallet. So if you guys remember the first time Steve Jobs walked onto the stage and presented the iPhone, there was no buttons, it was just a screen, a touch screen, and that was such a huge revelation. Though I can't really say the same about hardware wallets because with the Keystone, what they came up with is a four inch touch screen. Now, I admit that this won't be as revolutionary as when the iPhone came out with touch screens, but this does add a huge element of user friendliness, making the user experience with this hardware wallet that much better. So if we're really comparing apples to apples, it really feels like comparing a Blackberry to an iPhone, whereas the Ledger here is the Blackberry and the Keystone here is the iPhone with the old touchscreen. So the touchscreen is not only a user experience play, it does make things a lot more secure. How? Well, number one, as we will see, this thing will actually make things much more human readable, which makes it easier to prevent human error. And number two, this blows up. Yeah, I mean, it actually blows up. And we'll talk about that later on in the video because we have to save the best for last, right? So to get you guys started with this, if you guys already have bought a Keystone, you go to keys.one forward slash start. That will actually bring you to their get started page. And you have some simple instructions to do, which is charge your battery. You actually need a micro SD card, which is what I have right here in my fingers. And then you need to connect the battery pack to the Keystone, hold down the power button for three seconds to turn on the device. All right, so my Keystone is powered on right now you could see that it's at the start screen so we're just gonna click next so it does a security verification welcome to Keystone takes you to the guide where we're already at it's ready start so now we're at web authentication so we're gonna show you what that looks like so when we click next on step two we should be at web authentication this basically checks whether your device that you got in the mail was tampered with so what you're gonna do is on your little screen here you're gonna click scan QR code and and then you're gonna scan that code on the computer. So what happens after scanning you is you will get a code on your keystone. You plug that code onto the computer and then you should get this authenticated. Your device is secure. You can click the success on your keystone, but if you do not get this authenticated, your device is secure message, please do not use the keystone. So I just wanna note that you guys did something really incredible there, which is using a QR code rather than a USB. So if you guys have a Ledger, a Nano X for example, you can see what's attached to it a USB. Now, I'm a lazy guy. I don't want to carry a USB with me all around where I, wherever I go. So this is a very nice user experience upgrade for me. This adds another layer of security. Now, there's also one other thing I want to touch, and that was supply chain attacks. Remember about these ledgers. If you've been with my channel for a while, you know that I always say to not buy your hardware wallets from stores like Best Buy or retail stores. It's best to get them directly from the manufacturer like Keystone or Ledger or Trezor if you're still using them because you can be sure that they haven't been tampered with because what people like to do with these things is they would like to buy them at Best Buy and then what they will do is they will open it grab the private key put it back in the box vacuum seal the ledger and then return this to Best Buy and what Best Buy will do is they will put that back on the shelf without knowing that the private key has actually been stolen. So what happens is that this would have been a compromised device that basically Best Buy is selling as refurbished. That is dangerous. Now, what we just did with the Keystone web authentication is we made sure 
that the device that we use, the device that we use has not been tampered with and is actually secure. So on the next step, third step, what you do is you set a password like any sign up. So go ahead and do that. All right, so what you're seeing on this page is step four, firmware upgrade, where we need our micro SD card. You can see that mine is already installed. So what I'm gonna do here, because this was already used, I'm gonna go and partition it or basically format it to FAT32 MS-DOS. So we'll just leave it at its no name, click erase and let go do its thing. All right, so now that it's done, I could go over to Finder and actually open a new tab. Go to our no name here. I have already downloaded the multi Coin firmware. I'm using MultiCoin. If you want to use BTC only, then you can go and use BTC only. But just know that if you use BTC only, then this wallet can only be used for Bitcoin. So once you're done that, you can also do a check to see if your firmware is good prior to updating your Keystone device. So we're gonna skip that and basically go to our finder here where I have the file downloaded. And this is where the instructions is garbage. What you have to do is you have to basically unzip this. And once you unzip this, this, go inside the folder and you will then find your update.zip. Then what you have to do is you have to go to your SD card. Let's erase everything, get rid of everything because this is like my fifth time trying this and copy that update.zip, which is command C, command V and copy that over. And once this is copied, Let's go ahead and see if it actually works. All right, so like fifth time the charm. We are at our firmware upgrade screen. Let's go to the back here. You should see this little hole. That is where your SD card actually goes into. So pop that in like that. That's what she said, she loved it. And now let's see if this actually works. Go and click update now. So we have this update. Finally, we're not seeing an error. And then click update now. And then you can enter your password. And once you click confirm, it'll be updating. So while it is upgrading right now, I gotta say, that firmware upgrade for the Keystone is a big pain in the butt. But it's also a good thing because it requires work. Unlike the Ledger, basically, where you just open Ledger Live and it forces you to upgrade. With this, you actually get a choice. You have to have a micro SD card. You have to download the file, put it in the micro SD card, and then do it all manually. So I'm kind of neutral about this. It does give me a sense of optionality, which Ledger didn't because what Ledger, basically, it is optional. But whenever you see the Ledger upgrade on Ledger Live, it basically feels like, all right, you got to upgrade or else we're not going to allow you to lose Ledger Live anymore. Now, there is one catch about the firmware upgrade on the Keystone. You saw earlier that there is like a Bitcoin mode and a multi-coin mode. Know that if you go from multi-coin to Bitcoin mode, then that basically means that your wallet is going to be Bitcoin only. So if you want to use the multi-coin mode, well, you just have to get another wallet. You know, it's kind of like that saying, you know, once you go black, you won't go back, which I really think is a myth because I did come back. All right, so now that the upgrade is done or the update is done, we can create or import a wallet. Since I don't have an existing wallet, I'm just gonna go and click create wallet and put in my password and click confirm. So we've entered my password, we're gonna confirm, and then we're gonna generate a recovery phrase. Now we can create a wallet with a single backup or we can create a wallet with a Shamir backup. So we're not gonna do Shamir, we're just gonna create a wallet with a single backup. And remember, you could always buy a Keystone tablet, which you can find in my description below if you don't wanna keep your secret phrases on paper, which I suggest because these things are basically indestructible. They can't be burned in the fire and they will still be there when you have a flood. So once you see this, basically what you wanna do is you want to go and copy all your keywords down, which I will do, and this will probably be blurred out because I don't want you to see my recovery phrase. So one of the things that impressed me about the Keystone is that they had Shamir backups like we saw earlier. Now I'm not gonna go through what a Shamir backup is in this video. If you wanna know what that is, I made a full animation of it in this video of Ledger versus Trezor. I didn't really feel like I had the need to use it right now, so which is why I didn't go with it. But if you are the type of person who likes to do feature comparisons, then please make sure to watch my last video that I did on Ledger versus Trezor, which I went through all about Shamir backups. So basically, we're on the last step here with the setup, and you have options to connect software wallets. Personally, I won't connect any software wallet to a hardware wallet. The only thing I'll connect in this case is basically Keystone Companion app, which is kind of like Ledger and Ledger Live. Otherwise, all these other wallets I would not use with a hardware wallet of any sort. If you need to use MetaMask, just 
just make your own MetaMask wallet and use that. Don't connect a hardware wallet to that. Here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click Keystone Companion app. I'm also gonna select Polkadot as a chain. I'm gonna click that check on the upper right and you'll see a QR code. What you have to do now is you have to go to Google Play or the Apple Store or App Store and download the Keystone app. And once you open that Keystone app, you'll see the bind. So this is where we're scanning the QR code. So we're just gonna click bind and you're gonna follow the steps. You're gonna click the agreed private policy and then you're gonna click confirm. Allow it to scan. And there you go, it has binded. So this whole thing is mainly because you won't be able to see your values in the hardware wallet. So the only way to see how much crypto you have in your wallet is through the app. So that's why we have you download the app. So click done and you're good. We just did a lot with QR codes. Now, when it comes to signing transactions with the ledger, we actually have to fill in our pin and then click these two buttons, right? But with the keystone, all we need to do is we use QR codes, which is a much more secure way of doing things. In addition to that, we didn't go through it in this video, but right below the camera here is a fingerprint sensor. And when you set up the fingerprint sensor, you could also sign your transactions just by putting your finger on it. And we all know that your fingerprint is going to be unique to you because everybody has unique fingerprints. So that also adds another layer of security. So there's something that I really wanted to cover in this video, and that's the idea of blind signing. Guys, this is really important. This is what differentiates Keystone from all the other wallets. So for example, when we do some transaction on Ledger, let's say we send Ethereum to Uniswap, right? What happens is we will get some random string of characters that means nothing to us. But what Keystone did is they basically attach labels to everything, to all the major services that we use, for example. So for, in this case, in this example, this person is sending 0.001 ETH to Uniswap. These characters mean nothing to us, but just by attaching that label, we can now know whether this is an actual legit address or not. Because if it's not a legit address, what you'll get is an unknown address. So just having that would prevent so much human error. And that's really only available in the Keystone. It's not available on the Ledger or any other hardware wallet that I've seen. So this is a very good, an awesome extra layer of security security that's available with the Keystone. So let's go through the most important part of this video, the Keystone blowing up. So remember I said that this can actually blow up. By blowing up, I mean it doesn't blow up in someone's face and cause them to die or anything, though that would be pretty cool because if someone tried to steal your device and tamper with it, they deserve it. But by blowing up, I mean that it has a self-destruct mode. So what it does is if you try to remove the screen or try to tamper with the device in any way, it'll actually set self-destruct mode to go off, which will basically wipe out your recovery phrases, your private keys, everything from the hardware wallet. Now, self-destruct mode is basically operational for two years, which is basically Keystone's way of getting you to buy another wallet because the hardware for self-destruct mode actually lasts for two years. Does that mean that every two years you need to buy a Keystone wallet? Well, that's only if you wanted to use self-destruct mode. If you don't care about it, then you can continue using the Keystone hardware wallet as usual. Now, remember, if the actual does blow up and you lose your recovery phrase, you lose your private key, all you need to do is go buy another Keystone hardware wallet. So make sure you have your secret phrases kept somewhere in like a Keystone tablet, which you can also buy in the pinned comment below. But for myself, I prefer using an Apricorn, which is a encrypted USB. You need to have a pin set and a pin put in in order to access the contents in there. Basically, all of my keys actually go into this and I have multiple of these lying around. And basically the password, the pin is only something only my mother and I would know because it's our bank password. So if you're thinking about buying a Keystone Pro, this is an important part you don't want to skip. One of the most important part that I liked about Keystone was that they were personable. Now I've worked with Ledger for like one and a half years as an affiliate and they never sent me any gift or any wallets like Keystone did and Keystone never worked with me until now, right? So that's what I really liked about them and communicating with them was very quick, very easy, very transparent, which I didn't really get from Ledger. With Ledger, the communication was, we want to use you to push our product to your audience. So it always felt like a transaction. So I just wanted to get that across. And by this point, if you guys made it this far in the video to make it personal, let me know that you made it to this part of the video, the end of the video, so I can recognize you. And if you guys want to check out my Ledger Recover video and my Ledger Recover and the Treasure Security video, make sure to check them out right there. All right guys, see you next time.